Alright guys, welcome back to the Raven Legacy of a Master Thief. And in the last episode, we picked up my book, which we left back in the other carriage, brought it to the author, and got her to sign it, and we're still looking for that steward. But one thing I have noticed is, where is the kid? Because we went back in, if you remember in the last episode, we went back into that carriage to pick up the book, the kid wasn't there. So we're going to go and search for this kid, so let's go into the bar area, it's best to go forwards. Now, we've been behind the bar, there wasn't much there. We've had a chat with the guy that's reading the newspaper, the doctor. So let's go outside. I'm not going to go back to those two that are guarding the safe just yet because we've got nothing to report, obviously. So there must be something out, out outside the train, out here. Is there anything at all? So there was the ladder. Let's go back inside, anything down here? Oh, what was that? No, go into the saloon car. Into the freight car. Oh, oh! Examine the box. We see, we missed that box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. But we can still open it. Nice. Let's see what's inside. Locked. Locked. Bang, bang. Oh shoot! Uh -huh. Don't move. Matt, have you gone mad? There he is. Shoot. Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. Once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh man. Okay, so the kid is back in the fray of things. We're going to follow him, we're going to go into the saloon car. Let's go. Ah, uh, we've, we've confiscated his wooden gun. His wooden pistol. Pistola. Right, um, we don't need to go into there. No, I didn't want to look behind the barn. No. Around here, Constable Zellner. Come on, buddy, with your tash. Oh. Oh, Constable? Yes, ma'am. My son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... He's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. Alright, we seem to be progressing a little bit more now than we have in the previous episodes, so let's let's go and have a chat with Matty then, shall we? Let's go into the next car, see what he's got to say for himself. Right, that's pr Professor, we don't need to talk to him just yet. Time we come the hallway again, barge him out of the way. There he is, he's sat there. The sheriff's star and belt. Let's go and have a chat. Hello, Matt. Oh, he doesn't want to talk. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. What a douche. Come on, Matt. Did you really think that you can ignore me for longer than I can ignore you? I'm Swiss. It's practically a national sport. Um, okay, so we need to... You know what? We got a bit of scotch. A sweet. Give it to him. Yes! I have one of these. Do you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? 
I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. All right, he's given up. We're friends again. Woohoo! And we've got some options to talk about so we can say Lady Westmacut. Westmacut. The boy's plans. Steward. Um, let's, let's ask about the steward first, shall we? Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm. No. He was walking around a little while ago. Oh, of course, he doesn't know where he Hopefully is. Hopefully, they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, thanks for the tip, kid. The boy's plans. How old are you, Matt? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no. We'll see. Maybe Wouldn't an that actor. be a strange really? twist? Well, I don't know. Maddie being the raven. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really you would say that though. Roles, you Anyone know? would say that. I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. <laughs> that... That wasn't bad. It's good Disturbing, action. but not bad. <laughs> Disturbing. <laughs> right, let's ask about the lady. Your mother Westmacott. is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar Ages taste. Up. He live? His father. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then mom fought with him and he left. I was seven. Alright, well we don't need to know where he lives because he's already told us um, on the first episode, if you remember said that he was from America, but moved to England, so we'll say goodbye for So that. long. So longer. So longer. Douche. Alright, let's go get a hairpin then from his mother. So, so we can crack into that drawer, maybe, to get the key for this door. There we go. Long loading screens are really long. Alright, look at Mrs. Miller. That's the one we need to ask for the hairpin, right? Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. But can I not Very talk to her? Diligent. But she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt. And a difficult Maybe she's pass the raven. from what they say. Talk to Mrs. Miller. There we go. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Happens. Uh, please excuse my That's unusual, unusual request, to ask. but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's yes, just story. give me a hairpin. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? <laughs> of course not, madam. Such a nice guy, isn't he, this constable Zellner? Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. 
notice anything? Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my Of work. course you was. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good lord, child. Live as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary. Good, good. No, all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, let's go and pick that, that drawer behind the bar. Let's get behind there. Let's get all over it. Right, okay. So we can't open the drawer because it's locked. But we now have a hairpin. Which we can use to pick the lock. Let's and do suddenly, it. it's me who's the thief on the train. I'm the thief. Oops. That was easier than expected. It's pretty quick actually, wasn't it? Let's see what's inside. Mm, batteries, a toothbrush, shaving brush. But not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm. Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. So, we have a key then. Small key, but... Maybe down there, no? Okay, so now what we need to do, we need to figure out where that key can go. I bet it's for the safe. Do you reckon it's for the safe? Should we go back? Or maybe it... Where else was locked up? Let's go and try it anyway. Just see what happens. I bet the professor will have something to say. I have a key. He'd be like, oh yes, yes, great. Open the door, please. Right, try open the lock. I know it's not going to work, but you never know. Might open the next one if we could get into the next door. Right, he's going to say, oh, it's, it's locked. <laughs> it's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Let's just try the... Uh, I know this isn't going to work, but... No. Oh, hold on. No, that's a totally different yeah. key. This one is made for a padlock. For a padlock. I need a bigger key with a square indentation or a proper tool for the compartment door. Is there a padlock back here? Maybe for his violin case? That'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? That guy standing there and all of, all of a sudden they come along to try and open his, uh, his violin case. Alright, well, let's go back and we'll go and report to those in the other carriage. Principal Zelna, get moving. Aha, uh -huh. it was for the box outside. Here we go. The box is secured with a padlock. I won't be able to open it without a key. We've got the key, we've got the key. That's that's what it is. Yes, we've got it. Open up, buddy. Beautiful. That's What's inside? There we go. We got it. This we got the key. Now we can go back to the professor. I'm on a roll. Here we go. It's just a shame we can't run all the way. Skipping along the way with the scenery in the background as we whiz past. Woohoo! We got the key! Look at me, everybody! We got the key! I'm gonna open his door! Yeah! the enthusiasm of this game. Alright, okay, well, here we go. Pliers. Open the lock with the pliers. Let's do it. I haven't got a key, it's a pair of pliers. I wasn't I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was too too excited. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well come on then, hurry up. <laughs> It'll do the job though. Here we go. That was rather quick. And there we go. Open sesame. We're in. Hello. I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Oh, there goes his hat. Ah. 
Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Oh, where's he gone? Right, let's, uh, lock the door. Let's Do you lock. have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Or maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. That seems rather odd because don't you remember Matt saying a ghost went past the window and then the constable was like, there is no such thing as ghosts. That was who was in here. Right, valley balls. So, what are you hiding in your bag? That was the raven. What do you oh, have that you never worth was. stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. Let's take a look around. He is playing a dangerous I'd like game. To look around a bit. Of course. Right, so I do want to go and have a chat with Matty when I get a chance, but let's have a look at the desk set first to see wow. if there's any fingerprints. You have a very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. It's a bit of a douche, isn't he, this Professor Lucian? Um, examine the bag. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. <laughs> this is the 60s. Corner mm. cupboard. Nothing no. interesting, no? Nothing interesting. So, we've done that, we've done that. Examine the bottles and books. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick. Moby Dick. And gin, whiskey and rum. Whiskey and rum. All classics. So, if he's got whiskey and rum and everything, why was he at the bar? Bit weird. Is there no option to go and have a look here, leave the compartment? I don't think there was, was there? Examine the window. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? Where's he gone? He's interesting. Like Spider-Man. Is he going to say the same thing if I examine again? Did the burglar leave any clues? Here's something. Might be fingerprints. Fingerprints? They're tough to make out, but I do believe there are some prints on the window. Okay, if so... I had a forensics kit, I could make the prints visible with carbon powder. So we need something like carbon powder. So there are prints on the window. Okay. They're tough to make Alright guys, I... in the next episode then, we're going to get the carbon powder, Professor we're going to figure out those fingerprints, and we're also yes. going to go and have a chat with Matty, oh, with what nothing. he saw. Well, Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching, good. see you in the next one.